yeah, and, and so we're just going to start um, talking about some some screen share options, um, both from what you can share into a meeting, and then how you can sort of manage who can who can share into your meeting. Um, there's been some recent security changes uh, to, to how this functions, um, which we'll go over as well. So we'll see down at the the bottom. Um, of this Zoom window um, that I'm running as a host that we have the, the share screen button here. Um, and bringing, clicking that uh, just brings up a menu of, of items that we can share into this meeting. Um, so I'm not gonna go too in depth into, into each one, uh, but just couple, point out a couple important things. Um, the first being that you can either share your entire desktop or just a specific application that you have open. Um, so, if you know that you're only going to be using PowerPoint, for instance, you could share just your PowerPoint presentation um, rather than your entire desktop. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about maybe um, unwanted notifications popping up and being displayed into your session. Um, if you are um, planning to share content that includes audio, uh, you'll just want to make sure that this share computer sound um, option is just checked off. And when you check that off, it just ensures that all the participants in your meeting um, are able to hear the content um, that you're playing from your session. Um, so we have, uh, we can share our entire desktop, share just specific applications. Um, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can share those via AirPlay. Um, uh, in the advanced settings here, and this may look a little bit different if you're on a, a PC versus a Mac, um, we'll just see that you can share just a portion of your screen. Um, you can share just computer sound only, um, or you can share content from a second camera, um, which is basic. So you would just select the item that you want to share, and then when you click share, um, it just brings up the source that you've selected here. And we can see, in this case, I've chosen PowerPoint, and the shared content is just within this green box. Um, it's probably a little bit hard for you to see, but so I'll stop sharing this. And I believe um, talking about sharing screen is, oh, sorry, security concerns. So uh, there's been sort of a global change to, to Yale's account in terms of who can share content into a meeting. Um, so it defaults to only hosts now, uh, hosts and co-hosts that is. Um, so, but you may run into a situation where you want, um, you want a student to be able to share content into your session um, if they're giving presentations maybe um, or kind of reporting back from maybe doing some group work um, and and if that's the case you have two options for allowing them to share into the meeting um, you can either go into your manage participants um, just and kind of mouse over the person that you want to interact with and you can either temporarily make them a co-host uh, which would allow them to share content into your meeting um, or we see next to the share screen button at the bottom of this Zoom window um, that we uh, have this up arrow, um, which just indicates that there's some options here. And clicking that, um, we see a, a box that says advanced sharing options. And going into those advanced sharing options, um, we see these settings for who can share. Um, and so it will default to only hosts. But if you want students to be able to share into your meeting, um, you can always change it to all participants. Um, but just with the knowledge that it does then allow anybody who's in your meeting to, to then share content into that meeting. So there's so two ways that you can have students share in, um, either make them a co-host or you can just kind of open up sharing for, for participants. Um, but now we'll pivot since we're in the share screen um, just into some into some whiteboard features um, that are available in Zoom. So we'll see uh, when we're in our share menu, um, just this icon that says whiteboard. And what selecting this will do, we'll just share um, Zoom's built-in whiteboard feature. And so what that is, it's a great place um, to just uh, to be able to draw out you know diagrams or examples for for students. Um, and we'll see that when we share this whiteboard, that we're just brought um, up with this menu of, of um, options for how we can put content onto this whiteboard. So um, currently we're on the draw tool. 
and you have different um, shapes and, and thicknesses of, of line here. But you can also use text. Oh, I'm trying to type on my other keyboard. So, or you can draw. Um, it's just a great way to, to illustrate illustrate things for, for your students in your class. I do just want to, to point out, um, since this is kind of inherently a collaborative tool, um, that students would also have the ability to, to annotate on this, this uh, whiteboard as well. So that may be a desired um, kind of feature for you, or it may not be. Um, if it's not, you can always come up to this menu here, um, your sort of share screen menu. And when you go to this more icon on the right hand side, um, you can always disable attendee annotations. Um, and so when you select that, it'll just ensure that only you are able to annotate. Um, or you can optionally um, have it so it shows, shows the names of annotators, which will just put a little name tag next to their contributions here. But if you know that you're the only one who wants, who is going to be putting material on here, you can just say disable attendee annotations. Great. Um, so I think that's, um, oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, so you have at the end of this toolbar here, this clear icon. And when you click that, um, you can either clear all the content on this whiteboard, um, clear just your content, or just clear other people's content. So if people have added things on there um, and you want to get rid of everything except, except what you've added on, you can always just clear, uh, clear your viewers' drawings. And also next to that, you have a button um, that says save, which will just save an image file of your whiteboard. Again, so you could maybe share with your students afterwards. Great, so I'll just pause for a second. Beth, was there anything else we wanted to mention about whiteboards? I think that's good, Brian. Um... Yeah, and then we have questions that are coming through the chat window and happy to keep addressing those and thanks to our appropriate staff members who are answering those. Um, I think after whiteboard, Brian, if you just want to demonstrate from the host perspective breakout rooms. And yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to mention one thing, Brian. Um, yes. Nina does good at bring up a good point with the annotations um, that they can be used outside the whiteboard too. Oh, that, that's very true. Yes. So, so you can annotate over any content that you're sharing. Um, uh, be it a whiteboard or, or otherwise. Yes, that's, thank you for sharing that. That's a great point. I know of instructors who say are, you know, showing their PowerPoint slides and maybe they're demonstrating a chemical reaction and want to put arrows on top and they do that right through Zoom using the whiteboard yeah. functions. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, and I will just mention that um, some people, um, you know, they want whiteboarding features but maybe don't want to use Zoom's whiteboard. Um, we do um, kind of offer as alternatives if people are interested. Um, PowerPoint has an annotation feature on, so if you're using PowerPoint and you know you want to sort of bring up a, uh, maybe just a blank slide and then use PowerPoint's built-in annotation tools to kind of have a, a, a um, another whiteboarding option, or also included in the Microsoft suite um, is OneNote, which is a little more powerful of a tool, um, but those are just some, some alternatives um, for whiteboarding. Um, in addition to, to Zoom's built-in feature. Brian, I also see some requests for actually trying out the whiteboard in this meeting. I know you just showed it in your Zoom demonstration room, but would you mind sharing your screen with a whiteboard that people could just try out right now? Yeah, absolutely. I can uh, stop this share. Yes, and actually the, the request we're seeing people, it's unclear to annotate on top of a PowerPoint. So I mean, you're sharing a whiteboard, but if you're sharing your PowerPoint screen, the same would apply. And so right now, for instance, I'm acting semi like a participant with Brian sharing his screen. So if I use my mouse and go up to the top of the screen to view options, you'll see underneath there, there's a button that says annotate. Once you click on that, a toolbar should appear, the one that you just saw with Brian. And so, for instance, I am taking a text box and throwing it on the screen. I'm saying Beth was here. And so that should hopefully now appear for people. Um, I see many of you are finding it, so it seems to be working. <laughs> Give, give people another moment for some creative energy. I love the swirl down the middle. <laughs> I 
I feel like we should save this as some artwork as <laughs> a representation of academic continuity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been saved. <laughs> so great. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> cool. I love baby Yoda. I love that. <laughs> So we'll uh, great. So we'll just uh, stop sharing this whiteboard. Thank you all for for contributing here. Um, um, great. So so I know when we kind of kind of asked what people were interested in covering at the beginning of the sessions, I saw a number of um, a request for talking about breakout rooms. Um, so I do want to just jump in and, and spend some time on that. Um, so let me share my meeting back in here. Um, so breakout rooms is a, is a great feature within Zoom that just lets you take um, kind of everybody in your meeting and break them into smaller uh, smaller subgroups. Um, and so to uh, to start doing that, um, we'll see that, that as a host here, I have um, the option to select breakout rooms at the bottom of my meeting. And breakout rooms is a tool that that's on by default. Um, so you, you won't need to, to turn that on within your, your um, profile settings. And so when, we, when I select breakout rooms here, um, I'm prompted with this dialog box um, of how I'd like to divide these people, these people up. Um, so we can see that we can either do that automatically or manually. Um, so automatically, Zoom will kind of just randomly assign people into different rooms. Um, and we'll see that it'll always, it'll tell us the number of participants in our rooms and then how many rooms we want to divide them into. Um, so if we're thinking we just want to divide people up, maybe have them randomly assorted into groups, maybe do some group work, and we could say create breakout rooms here. And selecting create breakout rooms, um, it doesn't automatically start the rooms. Uh, it's just going to give you the menu of, of who's going to be in which room here. So we'll see, because I selected automatically, that it's, it's um, just assigned people into, into the rooms here kind of randomly. But we see that when we mouse over people's names, um, that we do have the option to either move them to a different breakout room, um, or we can exchange them with a specific user. Um, down at the bottom here, uh, we have some options. Um, and clicking on this, um, you just have some options. Uh, Kind of notable um, among these, um, allowing participants to be able to return to the main session at any time. Um, and then you can also set if you want these breakout rooms to automatically close after a specific number of minutes. So say you want to specifically give people five minutes to work kind of in groups. Um, you can set that automatically here. Um, you can always manually bring people back into the, into the main meeting room. Um, and then we see that when you do decide to close your breakout rooms, um, it starts a countdown timer uh, to allow people to join back into the main session, uh, but they will be joined back in automatically. Um, and you can set the amount of time between when you close the rooms and to when they're automatically brought back in here. Um, so it defaults to 60 seconds, um, but you can change that if you'd like. So it'll only be um, when you open all rooms here that it'll actually put everybody into their breakout rooms. So we'll see, I'll click open all rooms, and we'll just be notified that all participants have been invited to join the breakout rooms. So we'll see everyone's joined their breakout room. So now, um, you know, my account here is kind of alone in this main session. Um, but we do see that I have the option in this breakout room menu to, to join these different breakout rooms. So if you wanted to um, sort of pop in on people's breakout rooms, um, you could do that from here. People do also have the ability when they're in a breakout room to, to request help. Um, so there'll just be a button in, in their Zoom interface that says request help. And then um, you as the host in that meeting, just get notified. Uh, so we can see here that someone has asked for help. Um, and then you can join that breakout room directly from here. I'll just say later for now. Um, you can broadcast a message to all your rooms. So if you do want, just want to give them maybe, uh, you know, say we're, we'll be wrapping up these these meetings or these kind of sort of subgroups in you know a couple minutes, you could just type that here and it'll be sent to all of your subgroups. Um, but when we do join a breakout room, so we'll just say join here, join breakout room. You see that it now just like it puts us into this, this sub meeting um, just with those specific users. 
and users within this meeting can share their screen with each other. Um, they can, they can um, uh, chat with each other. Um, and then when you want to uh, leave the breakout room, you see in the lower right hand corner here, we just have an, a leave breakout room. And we see we can just return to the main session. So now when we want to bring everyone back together, uh, we can go back into the breakout rooms menu. And then we just see that we have the option to close all rooms. So when we select close all rooms, we see we're notified all participants have been given 60 seconds to leave their breakout rooms. Uh, people can join back in earlier than that if they'd like. Uh, but after 60 seconds, it would automatically bring them back into the main session. So we'll see everyone's back in, in the main session here. And if we want to sort of re-scramble these rooms, uh, we have this recreate button. And when we click that, uh, we see that we can just recreate all the rooms automatically. So it'll do a kind of a reshuffling. Um, or if we do, we could select manually, recreate all rooms. And then this is what it would look like um, when, you, when you want to manually assign people to rooms. So we could just click assign here. And it'll just bring up a list of, of the people in these sessions, uh, in your session, and then you can just manually assign them to the room. Um, in terms of recording, uh, if you are recording your session, um, as the host, if you're recording locally, uh, which means it's saving the file directly to your computer, uh, the recording will follow you into whatever breakout room you, you jump into. Um, and if you are recording to the cloud using Zoom, um, it will just always record the main session. So it's not gonna record those breakout rooms. Great, so if you did wanna restart these rooms, you could then just say open all rooms again, and it would bring uh, prompt everyone to, to join back into um, their breakout rooms. Great, so I will stop sharing this. And I believe turn it back to Beth. Yeah, Brian, we had a question. Can you quickly comment on um, setting up those breakout rooms in advance? Say you already know your class or students, uh, if there's a way that to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so here, let me share my screen. Uh, so once again, this is um, being able to pre-assign people into breakout rooms um, is a feature that that is not turned on um, automatically. Um, but if we again go to our settings here. Um, I believe it's in in meeting basic. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I'm uh, sorry, the first one in in meeting advanced here. Um, so breakout rooms are turned on by default here. But we'll see that we have this option to allow hosts to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Um, and so you'll just want to check that off. Um, if you want to turn on the feature to be able to pre assign people to breakout rooms. Um, so once that's checked off, just very quickly, we'll go into meetings here, and I'll just schedule a new meeting. Um, and we'll see that we have the option here to, to, to pre-assign in breakout rooms. Um, and then we can create the rooms here, um, or you can import it from a CSV. Um, this does require that uh, students be logged in to their, well, one, that they have their Zoom account created, and that they're logged into it when they join the meeting. Um, to, to be correctly assigned into, into their breakout rooms. So we could say create rooms here, um, or we could download, if you do the, the CSV route, you can download the template um, and then upload your CSV here. So it is possible, um, but it does require that students be logged in uh, in the session.